Hi everyone, my name is Johan and welcome to Fire Biscuit Gaming. I'm actually a software engineer at Google during the day, but I love working on games on the weekend. I've been building games for more than 10 years now. Uh, some of them made it to Steam, like Mighty Dungeons that I share, into, uh, share with you on my channel uh, or my blog, but other games, most of them didn't make it. I find that the best way to learn a new framework or new technology is just to build a mini game with that technology or framework. It forces you to learn the ins and outs of you know, the business logic, how to render the game state, how to actually render game flows, uh, and, and the UI in general. So here, during COVID, I was stuck at home for a while and I wanted to learn React because a lot of uh, colleagues at the, at the office were mentioning that they love playing around with React. So what's the best way to learn? Uh, I found a, one of the games I really like called Century Spice Road, which is a very simple card game, but also very fun. And I decided to make it a web-based version using React and Firebase. So this video will be focused on just sharing about the project. I also provide a link to the GitHub project below in the description so you can have a look, download it, play around with it and try to remake it if you are interested. So let's start. Uh, first, let me explain how the game works so you understand what I'll be talking about later. So Century Spice Road is a game of up to four players where each player has a deck of cards, a hand of cards, sorry, and each card has multiple functions like producing resources, transforming resources, or uh, simply uh, gaining new resources. And you have to use resources to buy one of the victory cards that you can see here. So you see the 16 points victory card here requires two red resources and three brown ones. And you can also acquire new resource cards below by paying one resource for every card that you don't want from the left. So if you want this one, you have to pay one resource here, one resource here, one resource there. And, and so every turn you basically can take one of a few actions, which is use the resources that you have. Here I have three yellow cubes to claim one of the victory cards, if it's applicable, buy a new resource card, or use one of your existing resource cards to you know, convert your resources or gain more. And if you run out of cards, you can rest to get all your cards back and then start again. So with that explained, you kind of hope, I kind of hope that you understand how the game works. I also linked to the game rules here on the website, but I can link the game rules in the description as well. So let's see how I went around with building this. So first, what are the entities uh, that are involved in this game? You have cards, you have resources, so each card has some kind of action that can be executed with the card. So here this one will be producing resources, this one will be converting resources from green to yellow, yellow, red, brown, and this one will be upgrading resources. Right? And some of these victory cards require a resource cost, give you point, and you have extra points with these coins that you see above. So before you build a game, you have to understand what the rules of the game are. right? And here is the same thing. So I gave myself three days to build this game because I had a long weekend, three day weekend. And uh, let's see how I did, right? So first, day one, what do you start with? So like I mentioned, uh, you have to understand what are the entities involved and what are the various game mechanics. So the first thing I built, there was no UI whatsoever, are basically the uh, various uh, utilities that we need to, and entities that we need to uh, kind of build the game. So first I need a bunch of utilities on how to shuffle a deck, you know, how to draw cards from a deck, transfer cards from one deck to another, which is useful, you know, when you're resting, you transfer cards from your discard piles back into your hand. Uh, resources, so here are the cubes, I have to sort them by colors so I can render them more easily. And then you have, uh, if I scroll down a bit more, you know, what kind of rewards based on which card you get. So the, the cards that you get on the left side of the screen, if you can buy them, uh, they have a gold coin, which is additional points, or a silver coin, which is additional one point. Gold would be three points. Uh, and then I have uh, various factories to create the cards. So each of those are kinds of types of cards with the kind of powers that they can do. And the various data types for the player, the game board, what's a victory card, and a general game object that contains everything, all the players, all the resources of the game, all the cards of the game, right? And then once I got that, I started building the various actions you can take in the game, discarding resources, upgrading, producing more resources with your card. And as you, I won't go through all of them, there's a lot and I don't want that video to last an hour. And you can look at the GitHub to see all the actions. And then finally, once I have all the individual actions, I have to link them all together 
by sequence of the game, right? The various flows of actions that the user can take throughout the game. Sorry, a player can take throughout the game. So I have a bunch of them here. You can see like playing a card, discarding a card, buying a victory card like this one, right? Uh, and, and stuff like that. Resting when you want to get your cards back. Then uh, paired up with that, you have to define your data, right? So I have three types of cards, an upgrade card, a trading card, and production card. Production just gives you straight up cubes. Trading allows you to convert cubes for other cubes. And upgrading uh, basically moves one cube to the next level up. So yellow becomes uh, red, red becomes green, greens become brown. And then there is this kind of like priority order, yellow, red, green, brown, right? And then how many victory points you get for each cube at the end if you're holding on and then the entire game data so all of the cards which i codified this way right and so i have a little utility that converts those into actual cards so i didn't want to enter like hundreds of cards in the game by hand uh, with using like arts and stuff so instead i generate these cards dynamically using my recipe system here right. so once i have this i was playing around with node.js console uh, using debug logs, console logs, all of these things so that I can test all of these functions, right? So I didn't write any tests because I only have three days and I, I really just wanted to play around with React. So this was the basic stuff. And my goal was to really try to make sure that the game kind of works in console mode before I even go into the UI, right? So that was my day one, pure JavaScript, no UI, uh, just focusing on the rules and the data and testing in command lines. One interesting point is when I designed the resources, initially, you would think that these cubes, let me just focus back on the cubes, you would think that uh, initially I, I thought like, okay, these cubes, maybe these are just counters. So I have three yellow cubes or my wife has three green cubes and I don't know how many, like seven red cubes. So I had a counter of yellow three, uh, green three and uh, red seven. And once I started implementing them, the various flows of actions, I realized it was actually quite hard for a user to target a specific resource. So if I want to select a resource, let's say you have too many resources and you have to discard down or you want to upgrade. So if I play an upgrade card here, I have to select resources, right? So how do I target a specific resource on the UI uh, if it's just counters? So I found that replacing counters by entity IDs, so everything in my game has IDs, I can more easily target them. So quick tip for you guys if you are uh, wondering what I'm, why I'm doing this kind of stuff in the game when you look at the source code later. And one thing that saved me later is uh, that I put everything, all of the data for the game into a game object, like one big JavaScript object, which contains everything. I mentioned that earlier. Let me just quickly scroll, scroll down, don't look. It's gonna give you a headache. Uh, but see, I, I have this big object where I have a complete game object here, which contains all the players and the various state of the game, as well as the sorry, the, the various uh, data of the game and then the state of the game, like whose turn it is, is it the last turn, you know, the history or log of actions and stuff like that. All right, so that was my day one. Now let's talk about day two. So I was quite tired by then, it was quite, uh, it was 9 or 10 p.m. and, and then I uh, went to sleep the next day I started again. And this time it was turn to play around with React. That's what this whole thing was for, right? And if you look at my code, I only have three files, engine, data, and app. So if you're not familiar with React, go through the tutorial. This is what I did. I just quickly browse through, oops, let me go back to it. I just quickly uh, browse through the tutorials uh, to try to figure out what's the, you know, how it works. Uh, you know, you have some kind of like UI components, you have some rendering based on a global state, um, and then you can give the components uh, a portion of that state to render, and you can wire up the components such that when an action happens, uh, they can trigger some like you see on click, for instance, they can trigger some uh, JavaScript callback. So once I understood the basic uh, properties of React, then I, I went around uh, to build my game, the UI for it, or the UI components for it. So typically when I build a game, I, I never start with the UI. Firstly, I cannot draw, so it would really look uh, bad even if I try it. So I just give up and I go straight for you know boxes and arrows and the most basic UI you can imagine, but I get the game uh, going as quickly as possible. So build the engine, uh, build the basic user flows and UI interactions, and then later on, add a, a layer of polish and a UI design. Uh, so in that case, uh, I define all the UI widgets. So, so to represent my resource, to represent my hands, the player's hands, what's a victory card, and the associated CSS uh, classes for each of those. Uh, and at the end, uh, 
Uh, I also needed to implement you know, the game log, the player points and the hand. So if I go back to the screen, you can see here I have like the, this is the player uh, status here with the player resources, player points of number of coins and cards that they have collected. So for each player, they have one of those. There's a game log here. There's the, the current player hand. So the one looking at that screen now the victory cards and the resource cards, right? This is how I represent it. Oh, and sorry, and the action bar at the top, which are the actions that the user can take. And there might be buttons here. Let's say I use the card and I want to rest to get it back. And so all this is implemented in various React widgets, uh, basic CSS and uh, HTML stuff, nothing very fancy. But one thing that was very interesting is, remember how I put all the state in one single JavaScript variable? A JavaScript, JavaScript structure actually that works very well with React because React has this update state system. So if I look at update state, you can have a old state and a new state. And if you set the state on a React uh, object, it will populate, it will propagate that state all the way to uh, you know all of the various components, right? And so you can very just just do a set one state, which is one big JSON object, and then you will update. Uh, all the components automatically it's kind of an mvc model in a way uh, where you publish and then all of the the views will update based on the underlying model so really cool uh, and so for me it was simply you know put this new state class and this new state uh, variable is just the whole global game state very very simple so i just do this dot set, this dot set state and then my whole ui will re-render uh, and that was great. And then you will see that method actually helped me a lot when it was time to integrate with Firebase later to make it multiplayer. Uh, so once I had the widgets, I also had to integrate with the user interactions. So, you know, uh, when it's the active player's turn, you know, what can they do? Uh, what can they click on? Should I disable cards? Uh, and so, I don't know, like these are the various kind of actions you can take, you know, discard resources, upgrade, pay a resource card. Um, and other stuff like this, right? Uh, so that was day two, mostly integrating my game rules onto a UI layer uh, powered by React. There was no multiplayer uh, in a sense that uh, you play remotely, but there was a hot seat local multiplayer where every turn it would be a different player making the action and the UI would re-render with the new player's action. Obviously, that's not what we want to go for. We want to go for a full-fledged multiplayer where me and my friends can play remotely right, from each other. Uh, so, uh, oh, I also implemented, of course, the you know end game screen and then additional actions you can take, like discarding resources um, when a selection is made, uh, to and you have too many resources at the end and stuff like this. All right. So that was my day two. Now for day three, day three was Firebase day, right? So day one was uh, rules, day two was React, and day three was Firebase. So how to make this whole thing multiplayer? And surprisingly, it was extremely easy because. If you remember, uh, I created that game state object that contains the whole game state. Uh, and I set state in React, which probably up updates my UI, but I can also do the exact same thing for Firebase. So for Firebase, let me find the set state. Okay, okay. where is it? Here. And so for Firebase, the integrations are, you know, who is the active player? So you need to have some kind of authentication mechanism so you know who the Firebase uh, authenticated user IDs are. And then you have to set the current state uh, of when the player makes an action, you have to update the state in the database. So you have a basic database with the list of all the games ongoing right now. And then for each game, you have the game state and then who the active player is. And that was just this line, right? This like 10 lines of code right here kind of made my game multiplayer. So every time the the state of the game changes. I mark the state as updating. I create a Firebase transaction where I simply replace the game state with the new game state. And then at the end, I mark the updating uh, as uh, done. And in case of error, I just break and I ask the user to refresh. That's the very basic way of handling these errors and I only have three days to do it, so whatever, right? Uh, but in that case, th that worked very well and uh, one big problem with this, you will tell me, is that, well, that means the, the client is responsible for the data of the whole game, so it's very easy to cheat. I would say, sure, it's true, but if your friends are cheating, just don't play with them. <laughs> and so in that case, who cares, right? Uh, obviously, if I was building a professional game, I would go for a uh, 
for moving the, the game state on the server and, and the client can only do actions and the server validates those actions. So the, the server is the authority over the game state rather than having the client being the authority of the, over the game state. But I was not in scope for that project, so I just went with this. And honestly, just these like 10 lines, okay, 16 lines, made the game work uh, multiplayer. Uh, you have a bit of, of more code at the beginning for the authentication, like figuring out who each player is, but actually this is done outside. Actually, there is another one here, you can see here. When the game starts, so that's the same thing, I just create a new state. And then I, I populate the, the game state with the initialized uh, information, the default uh, base information, and I pick a player at random. And that was it. Now, uh, I, I still had more time because this whole thing just took me a few hours, like two, three hours to integrate Firebase, which was extremely easy. And so I made, I spent some time on the UI to make it look slightly better. Of course, it's not the most amazing UI ever, like just very bare bone. But it works, right? And uh, actually, when you are playing the game, you don't you don't really care. What you care about is these values right here. Like, what can I do with my cards, right? That's all you care about. And what can I buy with my resources? That's all you care about. You don't care whether there is an animated character, whether your card flips over and stuff. This would go into the UI and UX user experience polish category. But in my case, for three days, I didn't really care. Uh, once I got this working, I could basically play with two players at the same time. So if I show you the other one, so if I show you here, you can see this is my view. I'm white, uh, I'm with a white screen, meaning it's not my turn. You can see waiting for Claire to make their move. And on the blue side, uh, that's my wife's uh, screen and she can see all of her cards and she has blue because it's her turn. So let's say she will say, she will generate some resources. And oh, you didn't see at the bottom, but something appears saying that um, the state is being updated and she needs to discard resources because she has too many. So she would choose two and discard them. And now it's my turn. And you can see it's instant, right? Although I'm playing over the internet. And so it actually rounds trip with Firestorm. Here, I can rest if I want to, or I can buy a card. Let's say I buy this one. And it will ask me to pick. And actually, uh, if I cancel my selection, when I select, you can see on the other screen, actually it shows the card that I selected. And the reason is the selection is also part of the game state. And so when the user makes a move like this, I could have done this entirely locally and only committed the move at the end, but I wanted to show the other players what that main player is doing. So in that case, I would I mark the selection as part of the game state. And then every time I select a cube, it would be also shown on the other side. All right, and so that was the, the main game done in three days. Uh, it actually works really well. You can, um, you can uh, download the GitHub project and then deploy it and play around with it if you want. Uh, I had a, a few days later, I spent a fourth day uh, not building the game itself, but building the lobby. So if I go to my, my web app, you know, you can sign in here and then you can see a lobby where you can create a new game and then at the, at the bottom, you can invite your friends by email. And then when uh, all your friends are there, you can just stop uh, playing, right? Just click play. So this took me uh, maybe half a day to finish. Uh, very simple. I just added extra metadata to the game. So if I look at my Firestore database, you can see uh, my database for each entry. I have games and users. So for each entry, entry, I have a game session, which is what the lobby is creating. It's creating a game session. And when the game is ready to go, you know the the session state will uh, will be updated with the game information. Uh, and then um, guests and players are who has been invited to play. Players have been who who have been uh, who has been uh, accepted to play. And then uh, I initialize the game data when I'm ready, so that the UI just reflects that. So this is another React app that starts the the subsequent one when I press the play button. If I go back to the screen. Uh, other tools I used, I used Trello, very cool tool, very easy to just manage my to-do list. Uh, basically, when you set up your project, basic things is uh, Trello, GitHub, and your Visual Studio project, right? So I'm using Visual Studio Code for React.js. I'm using it for so Unity and C Sharp, right? So that's great uh, for that kind of stuff. And yeah, so uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know the code is not the most beautiful code ever. Uh, again, it was built in 3D, so you know, don't criticize too much. Uh, well, although you're welcome to if you want. And uh, let me know what you think. Thank you.